one of the challenges that frequently people can run into when you've moved into something like AWS RDS is the fact that the backups and restores are all managed by Amazon, which is great. I mean, they've, they're managing that stuff. It's a platform as a service. That's part of the beauty of the platform as a service is the fact that they are managing the backups. And they're doing a great job. They, they've got point-in-time recovery. Um, they've got uh, service level agreements uh, showing exactly how much data you can get back and how you can restore your data. It's actually wonderful stuff. But if you need to move your data around yourself, say you want to move from one RDS instance to another, or you need to move, say, a copy of your database down to your own local instance of SQL Server, or even if you've got a local instance of SQL Server that you'd like to move up to RDS, things get a little bit more difficult. So let's walk through how we can enable native backups inside of RDS. Now the key here is that you must configure an S3 bucket and you have to have permission set up to that S3 bucket and then you've got to connect that up to your instances that are running on SQL Server. Once you've done all that, there's a way to get it done. So step one we're going to create what's called an option group. Now I'm not going to run these commands for you because I've already run them so, so there, these options all exist. But the idea here is we're creating an option group. Now this is, I'm using CLI, uh, command line interface, and very easy to use and I'm using it through PowerShell. Um, again, very simple and you know there'll be links to this, to this code in, in the description down below, don't worry. The whole idea here is that we need to give, um, we're going to create a new option group. That's the command that we're looking at is create option group. We have to give it a name. I'm going to call it HSR option group because it's going for my HSR instance. Um, and then we have to tell it what um, version of SQL Server we're running. I'm, I'm running just the, the small one right now and the major version and then the option group description. It's an option group to customize SQL Server HSR. Nice and simple, easy to understand. We run this, it creates an option group. Then we have to configure another thing, and this is, this is where things get a little bit tricky. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an option to the option group. So we're going to use the add option command. Um, we're going to apply immediately, and we have to make sure that we're applying it to the group that we already had created. Now the options are very explicit. The option name must be SQL Server underscore backup underscore restore. You have to have it exactly that way. The option settings, the name has to be IAM role ARN, and then the value in this case, um, you'll notice it's it's a little obscured, but that's because that's my um, value and I don't want to share it with everyone, but that's where you're defining the storage location. That is the actual S3 bucket uh, that it's going to go to for storage. So next, we basically just take the option group that we've created, associate it with our database instance, and apply immediately. And so now we're done. We can go and run backups, but it's not that simple. If we go here and we say run backup, we're going to get a permission denied error because the fact is, is that you can't run the native backups from within here. We can achieve native backups, but what we have to do is we have to run another command. So in this case, we're going to run msdb.dbo.rds underscore backup underscore database. In other words, a stored procedure supplied for us by Amazon. So AWS has given us this. Um, we give the source DB name. I'm going to go from Hamshack Radio. Um, we define where we're going to. I'm going to uh, um, my S3 bucket and then we optionally can encrypt the backups. I strongly recommend you encrypt the backups. For this demo I decided not to. I just didn't want to have to set it all up and, and create the ARN. But um, you get the idea. If you set that up you give it the ARN which is the Amazon resource name and it will then use that encryption key to encrypt the backup. You decide whether or not you're overwriting, that's a one or a zero, and then you decide the type. Full and differential are all that are supported. You can't do log backups, for example, so you couldn't say log ship from an AWS 
um, instance to a local instance or something like that. And then you define the number of files. Uh, by default, it'll be one, uh, but you can make it two, three, four, whatever you think is best for your system. And so there you go. That's it. That's all you have to do. Once you've got that stored procedure, you can run backups. Those are then native backups and they will work. So which is great, great news. Also, I would like to point out that you can run RDS underscore restore underscore database so you can run restores. Now, I'll provide these links in the description, but there's a couple of places you do want to be able to look. And for a lot more detail than what I've gone over here, you want to go to importing and exporting SQL Server databases. And yes, it says import export, but in fact what it's doing is backup and restore. And so it gives you all the details on exactly how to do this. Most importantly, and this was the tricky part, it gives you the permissions for the role that you must create to make all of this work. So without that correct permission set, um, you won't get it right. So I would, I would strongly recommend following the link and taking a look at that. Also, there is, um, this shows you how to do the stuff through either the console or the command line interface, and that's the support for native backup and restore. But most of the details is located here. That's what you're going to want. And so then you can go through and put all that together. Thanks for watching. My name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software.